Question three, the importance of investigating other views and insights. So a little investigation here. The study of the human life cycle offers a wealth of value for our personal understanding of this ever-changing discipline, which mainly includes childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Now, being open to other views and insights is the single most important quality we may need as we continue to learn and gain knowledge about the human life cycle throughout our lives. Now, the beauty of investigating other views, insights, and traditions Related to the human life cycle is that it allows us to find out so many new things um, and take in new perspectives that could assist us through life. Okay, just all about immersing yourself in different situations. We are living in a world that forces us to question many things that we have come to know throughout our lives. And it should be natural to assume that, well, not everyone shares our upbringing. And it may even shock us to realize that the people we may meet in our lifetime may believe in or do things that we may not necessarily understand. And since birth, we were taught everything we currently know. So seeing things from others' point of view, it may take a lot of time, energy, and just, well, all in all, a lot of tolerance. So 3.1, to find the term human life cycle. So these are just stages of growth and change that characterize a human life from beginning to end. So growth and change from birth to death. 3.2, indicate how an adolescent could effectively deal with an identity crisis as part of the life cycle. So you could get clarity within yourself about what you like and what you don't like. And you focus on the things that give meaning to your life. So I realize that I, I absolutely love playing racket sports and I've taken up pickleball. It gives me a great sense of satisfaction in my life. Really, I, I abs there's really nothing else I'd rather be doing than while I'm on the pickleball court to just simply be present. And that adds a tremendous amount of meaning in my life. I know what I like and I try to do more of that. I'm not an adolescent though, I'm, I'm 24, so I'm a bit on the older side. So know what your likes and dislikes are and focus on what you like. 3.3, explain why it is important to have knowledge about the human life cycle. Um, it may help you to just be better prepared and know beforehand what to expect during each phase of the human life cycle. All these transitional phases from preschool to primary school to high school to uni to getting a job to, you know, if you want to, you get married, then you have kids and then, well, you go through adulthood and then you die. Just, <laughs> yeah, I know, hectic, sorry. And accept the physical and or emotional changes that you may have to go through as, as human beings, you know, just change in, in hormones as well. And thereby it makes it easier to make peace with the inevitability of just the constant changing of stages in life. So it helps us to prepare. So it just eases our nerves so we can be at ease and just accepting changes, being able to accept things easier. We face less resistance. 3.4, discuss two possible reasons why most people may feel obligated to follow traditional practices. Okay, so we're going to do 3.4 at the top here. So people may be afraid of being disowned, rejected, or outcasted by family members, their peers, you know, just their community. Um, if they avoid these traditions, if they choose to abstain, then they could face a lot of hostility as well. So just that ultimate fear of rejection. And with the rise of the LGBTQIA plus community, more conservative societies have been quite shocked at their, their offspring, their sons and their daughters belonging to this community, especially those hailing from the monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Yeah, it, sometimes it goes against the holy book and they face a lot of scrutiny as well. So they are part of a, a faith that, well, they believe in a faith that, well, doesn't necessarily believe in them. So that's a bit of a, a very sad feedback loop, actually. Yeah, um, just speaking from experience, um, my time at Res, I was at a very like progressive residence way back when in the Winelands. And yeah, I, I met a lot of people that are part of this, this community that have faced so much rejection coming from very conservative, conservative families. It is very painful. As well, that is simply who you are. And I know a lot of you have opposing views. Some it may be religious, some just you have that underlying prejudice. I, I completely understand. I'll try my best to respect everyone's views. But uh, you have to draw the line with hate speech. And we're South African. I mean, it's if anyone knows what it's like to suffer, it's, it's, it's South Africans. It's your parents who probably grew up under apartheid regime. Some may be benefactors, some may not. 
but I, I hope you all come from homes with a decent amount of empathy and it, it pushes you to be empathic individuals as well. Okay, I'm, I'm derailing. Um, yeah, and some may feel that it's just their, their duty to be religious because, well, that's just how it is. We, we follow the traditions in this culture because it's been passed down from generation to generation. And yeah, um, well, these two are enough if you substantiate them, um, but there are a few others. Um, people may feel that the existing traditional rules offer them guidance that they need to live by, which is true in the Quran, in the Torah, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bible. Um, yeah, there, there are ways to live your life. There is guidance there. I mean, who can say what is right or wrong, good or bad? It's entirely up to you to believe what you want to. You are an individual that is capable of making your own decisions. So you may agree with a lot of it, but you may also disagree with a lot of it. And that's okay too. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fight your case for you, okay? If your mom or dad or whoever's giving you a hard time about not following your faith, tell them, come come speak to Goon, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll help you out there. 3.5. Assess the role of the media in promoting tolerance for different traditional practices and or views. So the media has the power to influence society or shape public opinion as to what it is and what it's not. So what's socially acceptable and what is not. So it's all about this, the acceptability of it. And well, um, this is very unfortunate. Western media has taken a very hard line. Uh, with some of the more, shall I say, marginalized populations in the world. Um, I mean, we are South African, so I, I hope a few of you share the same views as me. Israel-Palestine, um, yeah, Western media has had a meal with it, you know, citing Palestinians as terrorists. Yeah, well, what Hamas did on October 7th, yes, that doesn't align with Palestinian virtues. They are extremists in every group, religion, faith, whatever it is. But yeah, they, they like to paint um, marginalized communities as terrorists. If you look at the Rohingya population in Myanmar or the Sudanese population that is fighting in Darfur, like, yeah, I'm, I'm very clued up with these things. It's, it's what I live for. It's what I teach. It's what I do. But yeah, the role of the media is, uh, yeah, it's, it's crucial. I mean, if you listen and you watch Fox News, you'll think Donald Trump is this amazing guy trying to save the world. Which, well, yeah, I mean, you, you might believe, but I mean, that's, that's not my opinion. Um, yeah, he's, he wants uncapped capitalism. That's it. He wants to run his country as though it's this big business. And with great power comes great responsibility. The U.S. have poked their nose in just way too many things. Way too many little countries, Vietnam, Cuba, Congo, you, you name it, the U.S. have been there fighting for their own capitalist interests, not for people. It's, it's, it's never for people. We're just pawns and all of it. But yeah, I don't know. Goon School is derailing. Hey, I'm, I'm yapping in this video. Soz. But yeah, uh, the media has the power to also sway the minds of, of people as well, especially more vulnerable populations. So yeah, it, it depends what kind of media that you want to want to engage with. I mean, if, if you just want to, you know, listen to some more conservative radio stations in Limpopo, you might become an EFF supporter. You might see Malema as a savior when, well, he's just been convicted of some, some hate crimes, um, some human rights violations, racist words toward a, a white and Indian population. So it, it really just depends on what you are and what you engage with, what you allow into your space. And just like that, all our prejudice comes into being. So yeah, make sure your stimuli is good and it's it's pushing for equality in, in life because ultimately that's the only way we can move forward as humanity. If we start to accept people for who and what they are without any prejudice or anything like that. So yeah, that that's it read read widely if you want to watch fox news and you want to listen to these conservative radio stations that's fine but listen to others as well read widely listen widely form balanced opinions think whatever you want do whatever you want just don't hurt other people okay 3.6 how could investigating other views and insights regarding life assist with your own emotional development so a typical two times three here so we need three succinct distinct points and we need to be able to substantiate them in each answer also indicate how this development could be key to success in all areas of your life so well it, it could assist you to just become more aware of how you react to other people which may help you in looking honestly at how you think and just interact with everyone in general and 
In this way, you may be able to build and maintain more meaningful relationships as well. So yeah, just be careful of what you say, what you do, build your emotional intelligence, your EQ. Do self-evaluations on how you look at life and step out of your comfort zone, which may enable you to acknowledge your own weaknesses and strengths and accept that you're not perfect. So just self-evaluate, just evaluate in general to, well, check where your shortcomings are after you step out of your own comfort zone. Yeah, sorry, my writing isn't that great. I should be a doctor. Um, Next, identify with and understand the needs of those around you, you know, just be sensitive to what other people want. Yeah, you don't have to bend over backwards for other people, but just just being more in tune. And you can be more open and accepting of their needs as well. If who who knows, your little brother needs needs a, a sibling to be there for them. Maybe they need a third parent, a second parent, whatever it is. Maybe they need guidance in their life. Maybe your grandmother needs some some caring. Go go make her something. Make her a quick cheese toast or something. And in this way, you might become more empathetic towards them as well. Understand the needs of those you live with, those people that you have important relationships with, your your friends, your family, your significant other. Understand all of that, and that way you you develop some level of empathy. So yeah, that's the video. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Three point four, three point five, three point six little bit longer um but yeah nice little long question there sorry i made it unnecessarily long thanks for being here all the way just give me a thumbs up if you made it all the way in this video i just want to see who listened to the end okay cool love you all bye